Welcome to the first mass transit commute, a new short format series that's going to cover some topics that are fairly easy to answer. A lot of times they come up as questions and I'm going to jump right into it. So one of the common questions I get is how does automatic endpoint configuration work? When I use configure endpoints, what does that get me and how can I customize that behavior? So I put together a quick sample on this. Uh, all it does is set up RabbitMQ and call configure endpoints. And I've put three consumers in one saga in this. So I have a consumer called submit order consumer uh, that has added by default. I have an order audit consumer that has a consumer definition. And I have a cache update consumer. Now the first two consumers, I want those to load balance. If I run multiple instances of my service, it doesn't matter which instance processes it. Uh, the third one, the cache update consumer, I'd like a unique instance for each node because I want to publish out and fan out those updates and I want to ensure every running instance gets a copy of the message. Um, I've also put a saga in here just to show how the naming works. And right now, these are the basic defaults. So when I run this, it's going to go ahead and set up the broker and we will look at the configuration screen and we will see that there are four different endpoints created, one for the three for the consumers and one for the saga. The saga, which was the order tracking saga, has the order tracking endpoint name. The submit order consumer, I automatically trim things like saga and consumer off the name. So if you have a submit order consumer, it's gonna call it submit order. Um, and the cache update one, if you remember from the code, I had actually specified that I want an instance ID for that. Now you can generate this instance ID doing anything. You could generate a GUID and two string it, just something to make it unique. Um, in this case, I set it to temporary because as instances come up and down, I want it to automatically delete that when the service stops. Uh, for the state machine, the order tracking saga, you can see that it trims saga off the end. And it was, very easy to set up. Now the audit service, why is this one different? Well, the audit service, if you recall here, I put a little consumer definition on it. And within that definition, I'm actually specifying an endpoint name on it. And this is one of the ways that you can override the behavior. In this case, I've said, I want the endpoint name to be audit service. And it's always going to use exactly that name when I specify it that way. Um, and it will override any other way that I try to override it. Um, I can also, as I've done in here, by specifying the instance ID with the dot endpoint extension, I'm able to change that name and add the 62 on the end, and that's why cache update 62 isn't just cache update. Now I have a variety of different endpoint name formatters in the system. So I'm going to stop this, and I'm going to show how some of those will be configured. So let's say I like kebab case, which I personally do. I like everything lowercase with some dashes in between it. Super simple to read and it just keeps it clean and consistent. Once this starts up, if we jump over to the RabbitMQ view, we can see that these have all changed. Now it's cache update 62, order tracking, submit order, you know, they're all lowercase with the dashes, but the audit service, as you can see, does not change because again, we've specified an exact value for that consumer. Uh, if I were to go back and take out that speci special definition or just go to the definition and comment out that endpoint name and run it again, you would see that it would be named consistently with all the others because that value had not been overwritten. And there you can see there's the order audit consumer. Um, so that's, I'm going to leave that in there because, you know, it kind of shows the difference. Um, the other thing I can do is I can now come in here and just say set endpoint name formatter. And I could actually create a new one. Like let's say I want to create kebab case, but I want to include a prefix like dev for development. Okay, that's something we could do. And I don't want the namespaces at this point because that's a lot of noise. Now when I run this, I'm going to have a prefix on every single queue name. And this is just for the queue names, by the way. It's all the different queues for the endpoints. So now if I come out here, I actually have to stop it, run it again. But now when I come out here, I will see that everything is going to be prefixed with dev. So now I have dev cache update, dev order tracking, dev submit order. Again, the, order, the audit service, because I exactly specify that endpoint name, I'm not able to change that value. Um, 
yeah, so good to know on that. Um, I don't think that there was anything else. Um, I could go ahead and specify the namespace if I wanted to in here. Like for instance, if I wanted to split the services across different namespaces and reuse the same consumer in a different uh, instance. And if I did that, you would see, well, I put the prefix also. So it'd be like dev configure endpoints cache update 62. So if I was reusing a consumer across multiple services, I could include the namespace in there if I really wanted to. So you have a lot of flexibility and a lot of options to configure those values. So that's configure endpoints. It works for consumers. It works for sagas. It works for activities, routing slip activities, both execute and compensate. And it's really kind of nice because then you can just add everything through the add mass transit uh, interfaces through add consumer, add saga, and then just call configure endpoints and it will set those up for you. So uh, hopefully that was a good kind of introduction of what that does and answers the questions you may have. Uh, I'll be doing more of these as time goes on, but uh, thanks for joining and uh, that's all for the first episode.